you have been trying an antibody conjugate that is showing activity in a remarkable area, small cell lung cancer. Could you tell me about the study that you've been doing? What exactly did you do? Well, this was a phase one study where we included patients with small cell lung cancer who had relapsed or progressed after having had received one or two prior lines of therapy. And the patients also uh, had, um, had either chemotherapy sensitive or refractory disease. Um, and they were included in the study. And we gave them this agent called rovaltuzumab, tesserine, or rovat. And you got responses? Yes. We got responses, and um, the, uh, we found that the agent was active in the, this population of patients. And more importantly, we found that the responses were more uh, prolonged and um, more effective in patients whose tumors expressed um, delta-like protein, or DLL3, which is a biomarker for response in patients with small cell lung cancer. And not only was it enough to express the protein, you had to have high expression of the protein. Right, so DLL3 is in fact the target for your conjugate, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, and so what you're confirming is that that is necessary to be there in order to have uh, uh, effectiveness. But how big an effect was this and how long were these responses? So, um, in these patients, so basically in these patients that we treated, uh, for all comers or unselected patients, we noted approximately a 28% response rate uh, for patients that had been treated either in second or third line with a clinical benefit rate of about 68%. However, and more importantly, for patients who had high expression of this protein, the response rates were approximately 45%. And the durability is quite prolonged. In fact, for some patients, uh, we have seen, um, we have not seen progression for over 190 days after first confirmatory CT scans. And for patients who, uh, where we have survival data, we don't, uh, the survival is about 300 days uh, after first receiving chemotherapy. This chemo, this, I should say this agent, it's not a chemotherapy agent. And this is quite significant in small cell lung cancer because it is rapidly progressive. Um, these responses are usually not seen in our cancer, in our small cell lung cancer patients. Indeed, it's a huge difference. Right. Uh, what kind of role do you think might such an agent have, and how might you be individualizing therapy on the basis of this biomarker in the future? I think that the agent has a, a, a large role to play. Um, we have limited therapeutic options in small cell lung cancer. Only one agent has been approved in the past 10 years, which is oral topotecan. Um, and it's really uh, most effective in the second line setting. There are no third line agents approved in small cell lung cancer. So this drug has a role both in the second line setting and in the third line setting. And with prolonged responses, I think that we, you know, we, we have an active drug. Um, in terms of the biomarker, I think that the biomarker will um, help us select patients um, because those patients who have high expression of the biomarker seem to do better. Notably, there are some patients with variable expression of the biomarker that have stable disease. And as I tell my patients, stable disease in cancer is good because sometimes the stable disease patients can have stable disease for a prolonged period of time as well. So, so how do you see this being used? For instance, could Rover T be used earlier in the disease, perhaps even in primary therapy? That's a very good question. We are developing trials at, in various lines of therapy um, because, you know, one of the one of the um, the implications of the drug is that it might be targeting tumor initiating cells or tumor resistant cells uh, in small cell lung cancer, and so basically, um, so basically, if we can get at those cells earlier in the disease state, we might have more prolonged responses. So there are studies being developed along all lines of therapy. And could, could you, in theory, use it concurrently with? Uh chemotherapy because it, it's got toxicity only locally, hasn't it? So, well, that's a good question. Uh, one of the, so some of the toxicities 
um, we have seen toxicities that are that are similar to chemotherapy, such as fatigue. There's some thrombocytopenia and some anemia. Um, it could, in theory, be used with chemotherapy. We still have to do the, the early phase trials, though. It is encouraging, though, isn't it, to see an agent that is extending life in small cell lung cancer. How do you think doctors should be viewing this development right now? It is encouraging. Uh, we, as I said before, we don't have very good agents in this disease. We don't have agents that are really extending life in this disease. Um, so this is really um, an effective agent. Uh, we have to continue to learn how to give it. I think that we should, um, and it has a biomarker. I think that's really the important thing here. And maybe we can, while we should have trials that look at low expression of the biomarker, but really, enrolling patients with high biomarker expression um, to reduce the amount of, si of toxicity that we give our patients is really, um, is really a, a good way to personalize therapy. Does it open up the possibility of, uh, of a new approach to small cell lung cancer, perhaps looking for other targets, well, other biomarkers? Well, yes. And so uh, this is a disease where, this is a disease that has, is characterized by multiple mutations and multiple aberrations. And many of these, for many reasons, could not be targeted. And many of my colleagues who have preceded me have tried, and there are, they, there are no targeted agents that have had therapeutic benefit in this disease. And here, for the first time, we have a protein that is overexpressed on small cell lung cancer cells. And so for the first time, we do have a targeted therapy. And so what we can begin to do is is obtain a tissue for staining and this is not you know this is not a mutated protein this is a protein that's overexpressed on the small cell lung cancer cells and it's just a modality for the agent for the ADC to enter the cell to release its cytotoxic agent and cause a DNA crosslinks and cytotoxicity you think there might be others that could be used well i so I am aware that there are some other um, antibody drug conjugates being developed in small cell lung cancer. I don't know how far they are along. Um, I don't know, but this one has the, seems to have this really effective biomarker and high rate of response. So what, very briefly, finally, do you think doctors should take home from your findings so far? We have a, that we have an agent in small cell lung cancer with a target and that patients have had a high response when their tumors overexpress this target and that, and that maybe as we are developing additional treatments in small cell lung cancer, uh, as we've seen at this meeting, that for the first time we do have a biomarker. So we can test the, we can test the biomarker and if the patients are overexpressing it, they can go on the studies with this agent. And for those that don't express the, the, the target, there are possibly other trials to, to put their patients on.